Hello everyone, I have a uh, review of my uh, waste oil centrifuge I got from PA Biodiesel Supply. It's a 120 gallon per hour system with the inverted rotor, meaning the the nozzles and the, the uh, centrifuge are on the top as opposed to the bottom um, like a lot of the models are. Um, to start off, I'd give uh, PA Biodiesel B- on the shipping. Um, they said they were having problems with the computer system, so I didn't get a uh, uh, an update on when my stuff was coming. Uh, it took about between a week and a half, two weeks to show up. Uh, it was in stock, um, so it was you know I'm just used to uh, some of the other ship shippers. Uh, you know you know right where your packages are on the trip. Um, the other thing was. Um, this uh, piping here was mostly assembled when I got it with this pressure gauge on top um, installed and some of the other stuff in the box banging around dented it and uh, cracked the glass on it uh, so I called them and they sent me another one uh, no problem it took about five days or so for me to get it and I put it on I would just rather um, assemble it myself just so that I know all the connections are tight so wasn't my um, favorite thing to see but not a deal breaker um, all the parts uh, were there as uh, as a uh, uh, state in the ads uh, the other thing was that the band heater is a 1300 watt not a 1500 watt as they have advertised um, I looked on their site and the biggest one they sell is a 1300 so I'm assuming that um, the availability changed and they forgot to change that on the site so uh, that's an, one more little thing that was you know didn't make it perfect but uh, it wasn't bad so uh, here's my contraption kind of looks like some homemade nuclear waste device or something um, I just got a flat top drum it didn't have bungs in it so I cut holes, vent holes myself, they're two inches, and to uh, prevent uh, the hoses from rubbing up against the bare metal edges, I used uh, some fuel hose that I just split and put in the opening just to uh, put some little padding there. Another modification I made is I put a union right here, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but I... Um, took a bodywork hammer and uh, made an indentation in the lid because otherwise um, that would bind up against the uh, the top of the lid because it's thicker right there than the other piping. I also glued some uh, rubber padding on the top of the drum where these pipes uh, would touch uh, to prevent wear and also maybe to help deaden the sound a little bit. Uh, I used uh, blue RTV high temp gasket sealing uh, sealant on all the uh, the the, uh, the gaskets there and where the um, uh, the uh, holes go through the side of the drum um, for the temperature gauge and the connections at the bottom. I used. Uh, some plain I have plain insulation underneath you can see the pink insulation there I just have a a, a a layer of unfaced insulation and then on top I have the aluminized um, water heater blanket uh, that I installed and cut to fit and I just have velcro strips so I can take it off if there's any spills uh, if the inner insulation gets uh, oil soaked I can remove it and replace it uh, the outer stuff I can probably wipe off. The aluminized uh, outer skin is basically like a um, heavy craft paper that's aluminized uh, inside and outside. So that should ex add some extra heat retention with that. Uh, I'm hopeful anyway. Uh, another thing I also did is uh, you can see this copper pipe here. This is... Uh, a temperature probe and I took some old coax cable sheathing and put it around this uh, wire here because the wire is pretty thin 
and I wanted to protect it a little bit. What that goes to is a thermostat switch so I can limit the temperature um, that my oil gets to so I don't have to sit here and watch it so much. I do recommend if you use one of these systems you do not use it in a building um, just for safety. Uh, I've got the usual parts here. Uh, my thermostat control is kind of buried in there a little bit. I need to readjust my band heater so it, it's in that open space that's showing right there. I just need to move it over a little bit. I also have a Harbor Freight um, transfer pump that I'm going to keep with this. Uh, I, I made this cart um, because there wasn't really any carts that I liked um, for drums. There's a nice drum heater that they have online, but nobody has one in stock. It's specifically made to uh, put a drum on and move around with a, um, you know, to, uh, you know, put oil in vehicles and that kind of thing. I also have a toolbox over there that uh, it's got some tools in it, crescent wrenches to tighten up any, uh, any pipes that come loose, uh, some um, water detection paste, a small uh, manual hand pump um, to get the last little bit of the oil out of the drum. Um, and on the back side, I have a, a spigot here that goes inside uh, through a bulkhead. But um, on the inside of the bulkhead, it's threaded all the way through. I have an elbow and a close couple uh, nipple aimed downward. That way, uh, I can use a um, floor jack, automotive floor jack, to uh, lift this end up here. So this end is down, and there's only about three eighths of an inch clearance at the bottom. So I can suck out the last bit of the oil out of the drum with the transfer pump, and I can use uh, the little handheld one to get the last few cups of oil out. So that's kind of my review. Um, I'm probably not going to fire it up till it gets warmer because I don't want to spend a lot of energy and electricity uh, heating 30 degree oil up to 200 degrees. So I want to try and wait till it gets a little bit warmer, at least into the 50s or 60s, uh, before I I do that. And then I'll put another video out and kind of show you how long it takes to heat up a whole 55 gallon drum of oil. So. Uh, comment and, uh, and share if you'd like, and we'll see you later. Bye.